So there's a, a famous quote from Douglas Adams, who wrote uh, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Um, and if I can find it very quickly, I might as well actually read the whole thing out. Sure. Um, he, he gave it in a few different places. Um, oh, so here it is. So Douglas Adams, who I have the highest respect for, he's a brilliant writer. Well, he was. Sure. Um, but he said... Um, this is rather like as if you imagine a puddle waking up one morning and thinking, this is an interesting world I find myself in, an interesting hole I find myself in. Fits me rather neatly, doesn't it? In fact, it fits me staggeringly well. It must have been made to have me in it. This is such a powerful idea that as the sun rises in the sky and the air heats up and as gradually the puddle gets smaller and smaller, frantically hanging on to the notion that everything's going to be all right because the world was meant to have him in it, was built to have him in it, and so the moment he disappears catches him rather by surprise. I think this is something we need to, we need to be on the watch for. Um, <laughs> so, like, very clever quote. I, yeah. I think the point he's making here is not really a point about fine-tuning. It's a point no. about um, the sort of person who thinks... I mean, there's an environmental kind of message here uh, the, at, at the first level. You know, don't think that just because the, the Earth is nice that we can't ruin it ourselves sure. or that we don't have to look after it. I think that's the point he's making. When you try to apply this to fine-tuning, there's, there's another problem here. Again, you're... you're appealing to a explanation that you don't have. So, mm -hmm. for the puddle, there's a coincidence between the shape of the puddle and the shape of the hole. Yeah. Okay? And wherever the puddle has a little bump, oh, look, the hole has that same little bump there, right? Yeah. The solution to that coincidence is to realize that actually there's, no, there's not really any such thing as the shape of a puddle. Right. Like, it's a liquid. And so given the liquid that the, the puddle of water is a liquid and given gravity pushes everything down and given that the puddle is sol the hole is solid, it has to be the case that the puddle right. fits the hole. Okay, interesting. Let's apply that to the universe. There is a coincidence between the properties that our universe actually has and the properties that it would need to support life. Okay, if... If we now apply that sort of thinking there, it has to turn out that one of these things is really kind of a, a fluid, right? There's, you don't really need to, to fine-tune a universe to make life. Any old universe will do yeah. to make life in it. So the analogy there with the puddle is any old hole can hold a puddle. You've right. just got to be a hole. If that was analogous, any old universe would be able to support life. And that's false. <laughs> the problem with the analogy is it's not analogous. Um, yeah. Analogous. There's, you know, you, you're supposed to, you've given us a blueprint for an explanation. And mm -hmm. when we try to apply it to the universe, it doesn't fit. Um, you know, unless there is a multiverse and you've got a good multiverse theory and you can do all of that sort of right. Mm -hmm. Then it's sort of, you know, any old, it, it needs to be the case that any old multiverse will eventually turn up by the life permitting universe. And it's still not quite the same, but at least that might work. Um, so the problem with the puddle, puddle analogy is that it's not analogous. It sounds clever. It um, does sound clever. Yeah. It, it doesn't. It just doesn't apply to fine tuning. 